everyone i thought i have lily here under the table so she might interrupt us see lily was here and i thought i could show you what i'm working on because i know some of you wrote me that they really enjoy the um the art journaling or the journaling videos and yeah so i wanted to show you what i'm working with now i have to tell you i've already said it like a few times in all the other videos this journal is inspired and made with the help of james burke's class and i have to say Yes, uh, Lily wants to tell you that she has this stuffed animal and it's called Peekaboo. So this journal is inspired by his class and I really, I, I was really, really excited to be, um, to get like access to the class and uh, follow it. And I really feel that it kind of gave me let's say courage besides all the really great tips kind of the courage to start do something and have the confidence that i can make it work and look like a finished page at the end so what i decided i don't know if you remember how the couple first pages looked you can go back to the previous videos and see but this is what i decided to do so this page, I think it's actually a really good idea to leave the first page blank and go on with the journal for a few reasons. I mean, first of all, it's less intimidating <laughs> to, um, you know, start from the second or third page. And also it gives you an idea once you have, I don't know, let's say half or more of the journal done or completely done, you already have a better idea of the feel of the journal so i think you can create a, a like a front page that represents the style better and i really feel like the first pages are not as put together as the other pages as i kind of learned how to i don't know make it work kind of make it work make it work so anyway i decided i made this element this is not from uh, James course but I found an online course that I can't really recommend it because I don't think it's that great uh, I'll put a link below but I think you know it has kind of potential but I don't know the way that it's made was a bit yeah challenging so but this is one of the things that they show there and I took the template that they give and I um, enlarged it so that it would fit my size and then I have this round element which also meant that I could stick the second uh, page to this one and so I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it it was like an art supplies themed page and I could have covered it completely but I really wanted to make this element and then um I could just, I didn't have to worry about the other page because I just stuck them down and that way, mm -hmm, that way the mechanism of this thing is covered. So we just go to the first, to the proper first page of the journal, which tells just how I traveled to Japan. So that makes sense. And I think it worked out really, really well. And now on this side, I mean, first here, I'm going to add more stuff. I'm not sure what, but... I'll figure it out. I know I can make it work. It'll be okay. I used this really beautiful paint from Target. Um, this is called Sweetheart. If you want to know the shade, it's beautiful. These are like this and lilac, which I can't reach because Lily is sitting on me, but I'll show you how it looks. This is lilac, this color. These are, they look kind of more similar on camera than they really are these are the colors of my dreams okay so update i this is where i'm at and i'm not crazy about it i kind of like the way that the japan turned out but everything else looks kind of meh 
and probably if I had made some uh, guidelines and really measured the letters I think that would have um, made things look more the way that I imagined them because I just feel the Japan word looks good because it's like so nicely um, fitted in the space and the rest is kind of meh. So what I think is I'll take this as a learning experience. I'm going to cover it with my plan B, which I'm really, really happy about. And actually I did not want to uh, cover this page. I think it's a nice kind of breather. <laughs> you know, this is like a lot. Then you can breathe a bit and then we get into the journal. But I think I might take this as my learning experience and maybe put here um, some sort of element. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I think because of these cuts in the paper, uh, it will be maybe a little bit too annoying to put like stickers all over it. So I think something written is the best way to go. And especially if I have on this side something so like printed and organized, I feel that will be the best. But you know, I don't have to decide right now. I can continue with my journal. It's not finished yet and see what I feel like. So we'll see about that. Now, the moment of truth. And probably I cut it all crooked. No, this looks good. Super. Okay, I decided to speed this part up. I didn't um, talk as I was doing this. So I want to show you how this next part came together. And I'm really happy uh, about how it turned out. It was really, really nice. So I decided to outline my photo with the same pink pen that I used on the right side. And I'll uh, put all the products that I used in the description box. If I forget to put something, then please feel free to ask. But these liners are really, really nice. I'm really enjoying them. I'm getting a lot of good use out of them. And uh, them and my Tombow markers, it's really good quality products. You can see how they work on different surfaces. And yeah, just really, really nice ink and pens. Very happy about those. So I decided I made some attempts to fill this area with some words, letters, and then I decided it was just too much. We have all these words on the left side and all these words on the left side of the right page. It's just too much. So I decided to make kind of a more decorative element using some stickers. And I started with these stickers from uh, Higuchi Yuko. I hope I remembered to pronounce her name. I don't know. I, I have sometimes names get jumbled up in my brain. And then I'm just adding some of these other stickers that have some gold foil on them. I bought a ton of those and I've been using them, I think, on every single page and I just love them. They have the most lovely texture. It's almost like canvas. And then also this gold uh, details. So this is where I really feel that I got so much out of James's class. I, I can't tell you how happy I am that I feel I have the skills now <laughs> to maybe, I, maybe I'm living in some dreamland, but I felt like, you know, I can just put the stickers down. I didn't have to worry about making the perfect cluster or I don't know, you know, positioning them in just the right way that it looks good because I knew I could stick them down and then come back to it and somehow make it work. And it did happen. And I hate planning things. I hate measuring things. So many times I do something and then I have to fix it. So I'm like in troubleshoot mode all the time. That's me. I, I can't say, I can't recommend this way, but for some reason, that's where I'm at. And I also had to do this here uh, just because I'm really stupid. And, you know, sometimes the problem is that I was working on this paint with all kinds of pens and I didn't know how each paint 
responded or behaved on top of this particular paint. So the ideal thing would be to have just a little piece of paper with this paint on it where you could test different pens on. But yeah, as I said, I don't plan and don't do all these things. So I had to kind of test <laughs> some of my pens right there uh, on the page and that led to some issues. But okay, so this is one of the best lessons in James's class. And it's about these blank grounds. So how to kind of fill out a page and he gives really great ideas and really great tips. And this is one of his ideas that I, I don't know, I think I kind of made it my own. But the first step is to fill out these negative spaces between all of your different elements. And that really just brings the whole thing together. It just makes uh, a page that has a bunch of stickers stuck down on it, not in a very planned or attractive way necessarily, come together and look like something so good, if I do say so myself. So I'm, I'm just amazed <laughs> by how this all turned out. So me being me, I didn't really think ahead. And finally, I decided on adding this yellow uh, liner. Again, this is a Derwent line maker, I think they're called. And I decided to add some yellow. You can see that it's not the pure color because it's on top of a pink paint. Uh, but it is opaque enough to give a good look, in my opinion. And then I had to cover this boo-boo with another sticker because I tried different things and um, eventually I couldn't use the line maker. You can't use it on top of like other thick paint markers. So that is the lesson that I learned. <laughs> so I just covered up with covered it up with a sticker, but I don't think anyone can tell. And I think it an ended up looking good. So the way I decided to do this is that you can see the negative spaces. I filled them up with a yellow um, liner on the left side of the page. And then I moved into red and then the shapes on the right side are filled in with pink. And I just love the way that it turned out. I think it kind of brought everything together and it looks really cute. Once I finished filling these in, and this is really therapeutic. And don't we all need therapeutic things <laughs> nowadays? I ended up doing the same thing on other places in my journal, which I'll show you when I'm done or in the next progress video. But um, yeah, it really looks great. It really fits with my very kind of colorful style and just the whole style of this journal. I feel like Japan and Tokyo in particular are such a, you know, vibrant, busy, over the top, intense kind of a place. So I want this journal to reflect that. And I think it really does. So adding more details, I added with a white gel pen some dots all over all of those areas uh, you'll see it all really really better really really better you'll see it all at the end in the close-up shots so don't worry okay this is where it starts to get me it's it's so me it's just I start with one thing and then I go to the next and then I have to troubleshoot and then yeah so I'll talk about this and walk you through all of the stages in the last part of the video. This is the final incarnation of this page. I added some stickers here. I think it wasn't a must, but I felt like I needed, I don't know, to put something on it because it was just so flat. Um, I don't know, we'll see. Oh, maybe I can do like some um, dash lines here. Like these look, they look a bit like they're flying. <laughs> I don't know, anyway. I wanted to add something in the middle and I decided to go with this like tracing paper that I have. It's kind of like vellum <laughs> to, uh, I don't know, I didn't want any of the paint here and like these, all these pens that I used to somehow make this dirty. It probably was unnecessary, but yeah. So I added some, um, some of this tracing paper with washi tape 
you can see it here and here and then I decided it was too blank so I added some of these circles these are like acetate circles from an old uh, Allie Edwards kit that I've had for ages so I decided to add them and I used my A to G to adhere them to the uh, tracing paper which led <laughs> to um, the strips of glue of adhesive showing so I went in with some of my uh, Tombow markers which I have to say I have been loving these I went over it you can see there's a double layer because of all the things that happened after so <laughs> I kind of traced the circles on the back side of this tracing paper and colored them with this to help hide the um, the marks of the adhesive <laughs> which only partially worked and then I finally decided to add another sheet of the tracing paper and I uh, added it with some washi tape to the original piece and I think now I think it's okay. I think I can live with it. I might <laughs> go back <laughs> and maybe trace some of these circles, but uh, just because, you know, this is like, there's so much going on and then this is a bit calm, which is not bad in theory, but I still feel it's a little bit imbalanced. So unbalanced, unbalanced, and imbalanced, that's not a word. <laughs> so I might add, um, I don't know, maybe just some dash lines around here I don't think I will add more stickers because then they'll show on the other side and then it'll just go like that over and over again. You know, like the cake that you keep trying to <laughs> straighten and then eventually you're left with no cake, but you're happy. So I don't know. Um, this is what it is right now. I wanted to show you this is perfection, <laughs> if I do say so myself. I'm so happy with how this turned out. Uh, I think this part is everything that I wanted and more. And then, uh, oh, in case, in case you're curious what this says. So it says here on this part, it says, this is the story of a mistake at the baby factory <laughs> and how we fixed it in Japan. Read on. So it was just like this joke that we had, Megan and I, that um, we've been friends for years, but just online, we met on YouTube and <laughs> we've never met until this trip to Japan. Uh, we wanted to, but life happened and this opportunity was finally the time. And we had such a great time. We couldn't believe it ourselves. Like. We couldn't believe that we got along so well and we were joking that they made a mistake at the baby factory and that we are sisters and yeah so i thought it was uh just funny to write this uh, i'll should i should probably explain it at some point in my journal but yeah uh, i thought i would show you the finished thing anyway i hope you enjoyed this video i know those of you that do journaling um hopefully will enjoy the process of this. Let me know if you want to see more of these, if you made it this far. Thank you so much. And check out James's class, of course, uh, for all these awesome techniques and inspiration. Bye.